We had three main aims for the Leicester Hate Crime uh, Project. Firstly, to find out as much as possible about people's experiences of hate and prejudice. Secondly, we wanted to find out what impact it has not on just the victim, but also their family and even the community they belong to. Finally, we wanted to find out people's experiences and expectations with uh, the criminal justice system as well as other support organisations and to find out what we could be doing better to improve the support for victims of hate crime. So we used three methods on the Leicester Hate Crime Project. Firstly, we used surveys, and these were filled out by people to find out their experiences, what form it took, how it impacted on them, and whether they reported um, their experiences to the police. We also used interviews. So we conducted individual interviews or group interviews with hundreds of victims. And then finally, our third uh, data collection method was for me to keep a diary as we were going along. So when I was going to meetings or doing interviews, I'd note observations, my feelings, um, as the, the research process was going along. So we used three different research methods. I think one of the biggest challenges we had was because we wanted to speak to so many different people. We started with the definition of have you ever been victimised for who you are? So this included uh, the five strands of identity officially monitored, so race, religion, sexuality, disability and transgender status, but we didn't want to set any constraints on who could take part. So we heard from people who'd been victimised for their body shape, victimised for their mental ill health or for being homeless. So we needed to engage with a wide range of people. When we started, we were sending hundreds of emails, making hundreds of phone calls, setting up meetings, and often these meetings would lead to other meetings. And we found after the first few months, we actually hadn't engaged with that many victims. What we started to do was walk the streets of Leicester, get out there, turn up to places, whether it's places of worship, um, international supermarkets, taxi ranks, neighbourhood centres, community centres, drop in and say, this is what we want to do and we want to hear from you. So I think one of the biggest challenges we had was engaging with people who were often difficult to engage with and hard to reach. We heard from 4,000 community members, but in terms of victims of hate crime, we heard from 1,106 through surveys and then we conducted interviews with uh, just under 350. So a total sample of 1,480. Over the course of two years, engaging with so many people who have experienced horrific things has been really difficult. I'm, I'm from Leicester and I sometimes can't believe that people are experiencing things in this day and age, in 2014. I think some of the most upsetting have been those that are extreme in nature. So I heard from a family who were from Iraq, they were asylum seekers um, here, and they had actually, their whole family had been attacked, from the sun being beaten up, to their car being smashed in, to the windows of the house being smashed in. And it all culminated in the mother and the father being beaten up. The mum ended up with her leg being broken. And it was just a horrific story. Some of the other ones is people who are those most marginalised, so people with mental ill health, people with learning difficulties, the fact that they are receiving verbal abuse, being called abusive names, day in, day out, and it's routine and ordinary. And when you hear from somebody who says it's actually normal to be victimised, and me and my friends, we just see it as being norm, I find that one of the most shocking things. So it has been difficult, but I think it makes you realise that we're in a really privileged position for people to share their experiences and it makes me want to do as much as possible with this project to make sure that we make a difference to the lives of um, those affected by hate crime. Firstly, our, all of those that data we've collected from people's interviews, from um, the surveys, we're putting that all together in a big findings and conclusions report. So that's one of the first ways we're um, producing um, the findings. We're also doing five briefings papers so if you're particularly interested in disabled hate crime or in gendered hostility then you can pick up one of those briefing papers and find out our findings we also wanted to do a victims manifesto so we've heard from thousands of victims and we wanted to make sure that those voices come through so this is the victims manifesto is really 10 points of what victims say this is what we would like to see improve from the police from other agencies that would make our lives better